tell us what we're meeting to order? Yeah. I'll call the uh, Eastbound Pavilion meeting to order. Okay. And it is 704. 705 I have. Um, this meeting is a discussion of the FY 2020 Ambulance and Emergency Services budget request by the East Montpelier Fire Department. Okay, is there any public comment or items not on the agenda? Any changes or additions to the agenda? Okay, all right. So last Thursday night, the East Montpelier Select Board and Cal Select Board met with the East Montpelier Fire Department Board and volunteers, I don't know if they're all board members or not. And they presented to us um, a budget, which is up on the screen. And I think this is the one that Bruce took and made it so it was easier to view. Yep. Yep. Um, so I just thought maybe we, should, we could go through the budget and notice some highlights of the budget. And I have a couple of questions. I mean, there's some things in the budget that are beyond the fire department's control, like insurance and dispatching. Insurance go went from, if I'm reading this right, from 35 to 61,000. Right? So that's no. 20. Or is it is it a combined total of the? You're saying no. What is it, Bruce? It's like 1,500 differences. So yeah. I see it. 500 for ambulance and 1,000 for fire. Insurance, line 5206. Yeah, 5200 like is I'm, I'm looking at. Look at 5206. Yeah. Oh, wait. Five oh. Two, no, 5200. Yeah. Insurance. It goes 37, 38, 61. Yeah, what is the 61? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I don't understand what's from either. It's um, combined. FY20. Remember that far, the right side is the combined of the two, uh, two and four equal five. Okay, I forgot to bring my calculator. Two okay. and four. Oh, so I see. So what is right the total insurance? Two and four. And this adds up to this. Right. And yeah, this yeah, I see to that. this is the delta is 500. So it's a $1,500 increase. So what are you adding up to get with him? Two and four. Two and, th two and three. <clears throat> So columns, if you look at, yeah. there's two, five two columns. And, yeah. Right. The first one is the 19 ambulance, okay. and the second one is the 20 ambulance, which is a $500 increase roughly. Okay. All right. So the 38 is a is, is about a thousand increase okay. for. So I see a $1,500 increase total. Yeah, it's the two added okay. together. Right. So okay. 61. Is that, that yeah, that's right. right. Okay. Yeah, it's the ambulance and the fire added together to make the 61. Yeah. Proposed 20 is really what you should be looking at, which is right. the fifth column, uh, fourth column, fourth column. What is the, what, is, what column two is here? Column two is FY yeah. 20 ambulance. Proposed, yeah. No, column two is proposed FY 20. Ambulance. Ambulance. Yeah. And then uh, three and four are, well, four fire. is FY 20 fire. Four is proposed FY25. Okay, so two that's only, I would say that it would be a much okay. bigger increase than that. And so then, two and four added together get 61. That's what you got in the insurance. Right, and then dispatch, mm -hmm. they told us it was a 9% increase. Yeah, it's $5,200 increase. Yeah. Okay. Rough numbers, of course. Okay, and then my other question had to do with heating. Heating oil? Heating. Wood pellet? Heating. Wood pellet is the same. Oh, heating oil, station one. Station one is the old old one, right? Right, and yeah. top of time road. So why does it cost $5,000 to heat a building that only is housing trucks? Well, it's housing trucks with water in them. But still. <laughs> I mean, you only have to keep it like, what? 50 degrees, 40 degrees. Seth and John may know better, Rose may know better what the, mm -hmm. uh, how hot, how warm you have to keep it diesel just, engines. Well, it just seems like that's a lot of money to heat a building that's not used by people, and it's $4,000 to heat 
the new station, which is a bigger building and yeah, way bigger people. building. I just don't understand why it costs that much to heat. It might include the uh, plugging in of trucks with electricity. It's like separate line now. Mm, no, so no they've just, already got like yeah, electricity. Yeah, electricity. It is different line. Just oil. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seems, doesn't it, does anybody else think that seems high? It does to me, too. I mean, just so. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not that not, bad. It's not that insulated? I've been up there lots of times. Uh, yeah, but we only have, they only have one. Is there just one tanker in there now? Because we have one bay. We're using, we're using two bays. There's two, two vehicles in there. Yeah. There's the old engine yeah. and the tanker. The new tanker and the old engine. Right. And that's all that's in there? Well, does the town store some yeah. stuff in there too? But you, but still, you don't need it to be. No. And it's not. Forty that forty. thing, as John was saying, it's it's a sieve. There's very little in insulation in it. Yeah, but it's not a very big building. Right. I don't know. Who knows? It's, Who knows? Look know. at the history of it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. runs high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always has. Yeah. It just, it just jumped out to me that it seemed like. It does seem odd, and it's a good question. But. It is really pennies, but we can ask, but I wouldn't mind asking myself. Yeah. Yeah. Is it because that the line item 5160 is heating oil and the other two lines are well, wood and be. liquid propane? It could be, but oil is not that bad. Yeah, it could be, and oil is going up. That oil has Hello. gone up. Oh, hi. You coming to the end of the meeting like the cows, like Boyd does? Oh. <laughs> you too early. I didn't get my text. Yeah. I thought I missed I knew you two were in collusion. <laughs> I knew you were in collusion. Yeah. So we did a discussion we did? Thursday night so that everybody know. This is yeah, we Katie, did. our reporting mm -hmm. secretary. Hi. Hi, Katie. Would you write your name for me? Sure. Thank you. Um, um, anybody else have anything that jumps out at them? I mean, dispatch we have no control over, really. You don't have much control over much, much of it. Um, are, you, are you thinking you have control over the rest of it? Just we one. do. <laughs> well, not really. Yeah, we do. Okay. We, so you're going to say... Have to, we have to approve their budget. I understand that, but if you pick, pick out any number in here, is there a number that you think that you can work down? I don't know. That's what we're here to talk about, right? Well, I'm just asking you, is there a number? Yeah, I mean, the fact that when we were meeting with them and we asked if they could trim back their budget somewhat and very emphatically they said no, mm -hmm. their budgets have to be approved by these two boards. Understood. And we have I'm, to understand the impact that maybe not East Montpelier so much, but Cowles is looking at a substantial increase in our school taxes as a result yeah. of taking on the debt of other towns because of forced mergers. <laughs> we have that's a real that's a reality for us. Well, we're not, let's not talk that. about Act 46. I'm not. I'm just okay. saying that we it's have our reality. It's, it's our reality. Okay, here. but reality for the ambulance service fire department, from my perspective, is that it is expensive mm -hmm. and it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. But but also, we don't control it very much. Do we we still can think it's cheaper than the Barry Town. Okay, so that that's the question. Remember, that's why yeah. I always. So the question is this: okay. either you accept what's going to go on here, which means the salary is going to keep going up, because it's moving to a salaried ambulance service, yeah. and we have no control on that. We could say no, and let them try to do a uh, volunteer. volunteer, but the volunteer systems all over Vermont are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we know that. We know that. Right. Volunteerism is on the decline. Yep. We need seven days. Okay, and we have uh, dedicated people down there that are willing to work themselves to death, but it's our responsibility that they are not going. They can't be allowed to do that. They'll keep the ambulance service going if we said no salaries. They would do that, but I don't think that's a responsible thing to do. I don't think we're. I don't think we're saying that. I'm okay, not saying that. no, but what I'm saying is either we accept their budget, which is reasonable because if you go through a line by line a lot of these things are not increased and the things that are increased are beyond their control so the salaries is the biggest thing that drives the increases well if you look at this sheet that bruce i'm assuming bruce you did this i think it's a nice sheet too yeah it is it's very helpful yeah um before you go denise i'm sorry can we just hook back to the heating oil yeah i i thought something was ringing a bell if you look at 
This is what they gave out last week. Mm -hmm. If you look at their audit, it shows that their audited FY 2018 at, at Station 1 was 5,100 and something. Uh, so they're just trying to match up with what their current reality. That's why I went to 5,000. Yeah. 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 It actually was at 5,000. They dropped it to four yeah. based on FY 17s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the prices went up enough yeah. that they yeah, drove yeah. it back up. Right. Okay. But I, I mean, I don't disagree that their volunteerism is extraordinary and that they put in tons and tons of hours. But like I said, the reality is we have to look at the bottom line for our taxpayers. Understood. But I'm just saying that, unfortunately, the ambulance service is going to be more expensive. Even, you know, like when you said, well, the you know, inflation People's wages only go up one percent, two percent. This is up a lot more than that. It is. But that this isn't going to match in the rate of inflation. It's going to go up faster than that, and it's going to be expensive. That's the way it is. It's an expensive service. It's a, it's and it's out of your control when you start talking about putting salaries in it. Well, and they also said that they weren't willing to ask Marshfield for an increase because they'd only been serving them for a year. Do, do we know what the salary is amount is per hour? 18, yeah, 18, 18 to 20. It's okay. 18 for the medics and 20 for the paramedic. Which, okay, so it was so $50 they, hours an hour and they were raising it by okay, a large increment. Okay, I'd have a different. Yes. Right, okay. Okay, 18 so, to $20 an hour does not, that's only if you bring someone in there and do not pay them benefits. Okay, right. if you go to salaries and you have full time people, that would include benefits, which mm -hmm. is even more. Mm -hmm. What happened to the company from out of state that they were going to try to get? Um, that's, was that ambulance and yeah that was ambulance, ambulance right what was the name of that company Rose? i don't know but they i think it was at our One december meeting last year they talked about getting um almost like you know like traveling nurses yeah. um where you could get contracted people for like a three-month stint and mm -hmm. they mentioned the organization was from connecticut mm -hmm. and that um they were going to get them but i don't know maybe they i forgot to ask the question is that a cheaper option is that I don't know. Point. I, thought, I think it, it might have been like a stopgap option. Yeah. You know. But they still got to pay. It's well, it's no, I don't think so either. Well, it's, it was contracted, so there weren't wouldn't be benefits. Is yeah. the yeah. part of the issue. And they would. Yeah. Just yeah. Stay at the fire station or something. Yeah, like stay at the fire shift. station. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that this budget was based upon eighteen to twenty dollars an hour. That once you go to salaries, you're gonna have to start paying benefits. It's gonna be even more. So. I'm just saying that. So uh, I'm confused. Are you saying they're going that heading in that direction? I'm saying it could if you but go to salary that might be what we're presented with. So well, they still have that. some room in the budget because they're not taking money out of the uh, ambulance revenue to fund this budget, which we have told them that they could do. So there is fluff in the budget as far as and the ambulance revenue is going where. The ambulance revenue right now goes to mostly capital reserve and their and their contingency fund. Uh, but we've told them they could take money off the top, and I can't remember the percentage. They could go towards salaries. That's what we agreed to it last year. It's actually not a percentage. It was a flat number. It was you a said flat number. Up to fifty thousand. Right. But that was before they added Marshfield in. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the number mm -hmm. we were shooting for, which mm -hmm. is around two twenty, mm -hmm. they went by mm -hmm. by getting the Marshfield mm -hmm. part and that ten thousand they moved in from. Yep. The insurance line last year. Well, I have yeah. no idea that's, what you're talking about. That's just a one shot line. You should have gone to the meeting. <laughs> so which version yeah, I was you like? The ten thousand dollars insurance thing was just a, it's just a bookkeeping thing. Yeah. It's not gonna happen again. It's just because they moved into payments for their insurance on the quarter and let it, instead of just paying a lump sum up front. Yeah. So the quarter wound up after the first year. Yeah. So how did we benefit from them taking Marshfield? Does anybody know? Forty thousand bucks. You asked a more subtle question. How did we benefit? We don't know. Well, 40000 off it uh, is On what you can see. Yeah, but you, you had this there. discussion before. How but much then, is actually a cost? They were already going there. They well, have a lot of yeah. fixed yeah. costs. So, right. yeah. That's right. 50%. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more fuel. It's more wear and tear. They already were going there. Staff. And they go there because of mutual aid. They right. go there. I mean, they have because to. they got called there, whatever for whatever right. reason, right. Yeah. because Cabot wasn't responding, right. and neither was anybody right. else. So, so they that's went. A mutual aid response. Right. But they, well, they went, but they weren't getting paid that forty thousand bucks to go there. They got the yeah. call charge, but they didn't get the forty thousand. So I don't understand why there would be a problem in getting forty thousand more dollars. Great, yeah. they already were going there. Yeah. So it is an extra gas. They already were paying the gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
and they did take two things out of the budget the um the hose testing yep. and the ambulance fee that 3300 so they bucks. said they were right. going to cover well, that and they're already going there but with the ambulance they seek reimbursement right right so now actually maybe it, in, in insurance the ultimate best case could be forty thousand free bucks you know if they make no calls no they've already got the forty thousand dollar free bucks the other the other thing that will happen well, they is get they'll get all the calls. No, they, get, they already they heard get the insurance the reimbursement. They get the insurance reimbursement in addition to the that. forty thousand. Yeah, so any yeah. call that they make has a potential for putting more money into their coffers. Right. Of course, one of the problems with serving a town like Marshfield is uh, gonna be a lot of Medicaid and Medicare, perhaps, mm -hmm. and they don't pay very well. Mm -hmm. They only pay pennies on the dollars. Mm -hmm. About 30, yeah. yeah, thirty to fifty. But um, if they already were going there, and now they're going to be getting the forty thousand, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your comment, Jerry? <clears throat> Not yet. <laughs> so I don't think anybody disputes that they do an amazing job, and they're very frugal as much as they can be. But, but it expensive. is, a, but it is expensive. It is a four percent overall. More than that. And it's, I'm not quite sure I understand Bruce's. It's seven point four five. It says seven point four five, but then it says the total is four point zero nine. I don't understand how. Well, that's the seven point four five is your seven. town appropriation. Yeah. Is up okay. that much. The four point oh nine is their actual budget is up that much, but Plainfield and Marshfield are not increasing. To the degree that, that we, we are. We are. <laughs> well, yeah. and that 7.45 includes the adjustment back up from the bond, right? No. No, that's on top of that. This is EMFD so, budgets. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm sure you went over all this at the meeting on this. But no, not necessarily. Plainfield and Marshfield, they're, they're, we're fixing their contribution at uh, a lower number or the same number as last year? No, no. Lower Marshfield, this increase? is the first year, the 40000 Oh, okay. They don't feel right about it. Plainfield we had last year? Right. Right. Plainfield's going up. They were in a three-year agreement. Well, no, they're not going up. It's yeah, it's, they're going it up 3%. 3%. 3%. Okay, we just don't have the figures of what it was. Okay. What's on this sheet? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And so presumably the, the, the number that was presented to Marshfield that I guess they're reviewing as well, um, that that incorporated the increased costs that we're all seeing, right? So, uh, so maybe the question thinking. could be, if you're thinking about spreading the cost more evenly, is why wouldn't they charge more to those towns that they're taking on than they are? Right. Would it be more equitable for Callis, East Montpelier, Plainfield, and Marshfield to be paying a more equal share? I think it would share. Be. Well, when you look at dispatch... It's not a competitive situation. I already asked them. I said, is this competitive, like Barrytown? And they said no. Right. So, I don't know, you know, I don't know how what, it works in other towns. They use, what, yeah. what it, they're not using a formula, I guarantee you. They're using a nothing formula. They're using... Population? You know, no, 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 that calls? doesn't... Well, I don't know. The I don't know. population's I don't, in the far right. Yeah, I don't think they're using it. They were using a formula to come up with that original playing field cost. I thought that was competitive with Barry Town. That's what I mean. It that's was. the formula. Yeah, that was the formula, but that's not a formula. <laughs> well, it's a formula that <laughs> it worked created that a point. number that it, had been playing on. It created since. a number, and, and God bless them, that's how they came to a number, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But thinking about spreading costs over population and making it more fair, would it be fair to come up with a different formula? Well, look, I mean, you can yeah. just look at Callis yeah. versus Marshfield. Um, Double yeah. the cost right. for essentially the same population. Well, but then, right. are we not? Do we have more calls than they do? Not very that doesn't. Let's not forget. Let's forget the call. I know well, it's fixed cost too. Yeah, yeah. but this is only we're only talking ambulance for Marshfield and Plainfield. Right. True. But look at not the ambulance fire. part of it. I'm looking at the ambulance. Right. So let's keep that in mind. Double. What's double? The ambulance cost to the residents of. Oh, the okay. ambulance cost the Callis is eighty thousand. The it's ambulance cost the Plainfield fifty thousand. And then forty four same population. Field. Right. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be an equitable increase because the base the basis reflects those differences. But what, we're, but what we're saying is that per, per could, head, we, could we ask them to spread the cost of the ambulance? Mm -hmm. more equitably among the 
Four there must be some logic. What was your logic? I mean, it, these numbers are. I don't know. I, 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 I don't. The number that they came up with originally, according to Bruce and probably myself also, it was a competitive situation with Barrytown, and I'm assuming that Barrytown was charging more. Mm -hmm. So East Montpelier wanted to get their yeah. so they charged them forty something. That was the of playing the field thing. Yeah, yeah. Plain field. I right. remember that kind of right. Yeah. And then I think the Marshfield number, I bet you, they just came out of their hat because they're like, well, Plainfield's paying this much, let's charge this much to Marshfield. That's what Toby talked about. Uh huh. No, this is the they're putting that into the south. Well, the that very so town it? number yeah. that they that's put they, out. That's where they came up with that number. No, no, they didn't. Salary. No, no, they just put it into salary. They're not. That's not how they come up with forty thousand. I think they, they told us last year that they were paying Cabot somewhere in the 30s. Exactly. That's what so I think. They just rounded up. About the same. I know that's what they did. I'll oh, bet you have five okay, bucks. Yeah. I'll bet you have okay. six back. Of well, why don't we push back <laughs> and revise this number? Mm -hmm. well, I, I'm not sure that's the right approach. Let's just put this out there. Our, 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 is, that a, is that a thought? I think it's something we have to consider. We want to get our number down to six, and we want to get them up. I mean, not the full amount. Which they're still coming out ahead and move our number down to 6%. Each of well, are you looking at the are you making up the, numbers here for discussion? Are you looking at the ambulance column, John? I'm looking at just oh, look at the ambulance. Oh, we're at six percent. Yeah, we're at five percent. Combined, I'm sorry. Yeah, if John, good suggestion. There we go. No, no, <laughs> an equitable <laughs> increase stars. Okay, no, let, let's think about this way. Let's so think about an equitable <laughs> number that would, would would based on population that could be a number, a formula that you could work with in the future. Yeah, I'm with you. Right. right. However. There is an incentive to get Marshfield on board at Absolutely. 40 and then maybe have it a working number in the future. But, but oh, no, I, under, I, I, I agree. Well, that's, that's your iPhone. But they have, <laughs> Don't you have, have one? I got a knife. <laughs> they, but but they, they have, have like done it for a year with Marshfield. Only no. a year. Not even a year. Uh, no. Uh, not even a year. Not even a year, I don't think. No, they just started, and I think, right. didn't they say they were um, renegotiating the three-year contract with Plainfield? With Plainfield. Next year. No, now. With Plainfield, 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 but not Marshfield. Right. Plainfield. Plainfield. Okay, so in any change like this, of course, you've got to make it incremental. Right. Yeah. And you're not going to say, oh, we're going to stop it right now, and this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to make a suggestion, and you're going to come up with a formula that could work. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what, That's what I'm saying. That. Well, we could just add the populations up and yeah. see and divide, divide it evenly <laughs> and see what it, how that changes their number. Right. Yeah, do you know the population of the town? Right here. 15. Right here. Right. Far right-hand right. side. Yep. 6934. Poor Marshfield should be paying more than Plainfield. From so right. we, what's the total if we add 519. Up? Oh, just ambulance? If I add just all the, the total cost of all the ambulance for everybody. 333,220. Okay, i got to store this baby. How do I do that on this calculator? I'll tell it to you after. Just put in 333,220 and I'll tell you 6934 okay. afterwards. My brain. Did you figure it out for his head? 333,220. Yeah, I know. divided by 7. Divided yeah. by what's the number? 69.34. That's five. Right. That's 48 five. bucks. A, 50, a 50 person. bucks. 48. 50 person. bucks. So 50 bucks a person. Mm -hmm. do, yeah. We'll do 48. Yeah. 48 times, let's see, what do we got for a Marshfield? 1501? Mm -hmm. That's, that's that gives 70, 72 grand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so. And then a playing field? What was it? 72,000. 72, 72, 72, 48 times. 72,000 or 7,200? Mm -hmm. 72,000. 60. 60 something thousand. Yeah, it should be around 60. These farmers, they can do anything on the back of the haystack. Because we're used to losing money. We lose it every day. No, so we just have to figure out what to lose. 60 for 80. 60 for 80, yeah. So playing field is actually less than Marshfield because of the population. And yeah. Right. East Montpelier is 2576. Yep. 76. That's 48. You're not going to like this. 123, no. 648. <laughs> no, it's not a good exercise. 123 what? 123, 648. Uh-huh. Oh, is, is East my player taking in the shorts? Yep. No. No, you guys you do. You do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Callus. 15. We always, that's, 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 that's normal. That's all right. Okay, we'll just keep the same pattern. <laughs> You're going to stay right at 80. Or maybe a little 78-ish. 76. No, they're not. Hey, there's ice cream off. money savings here. Not much. 76, 656. So they're right on. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Well, they're right on according to this. Right. Well, this yeah, that's what we're trying to this come up with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not about us saving much, but everyone. Well, you small bidders was taking pants. No, we reduced. 
We went yeah, but we're doing right. We're taking we're, it. You were we subsidizing were. Yes, us. Us, us, I know. Because you care we about have been. We care about you. That's why we're getting your school bill. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. Guess what? We'll pay, guess we'll what? pay our fair share Think of about this. <laughs> What's your school going to be doing in a couple of years? You want to get in that discussion? What? What's your school going to need to be doing in the next few years? Uh, we're going to so buy a bulldozer. Buy okay. serve two yeah. purposes: highway <laughs> grading in the spring and yeah, flattening the school. school. Okay. okay, guys. Can we get That's back to? Yeah. <laughs> can we get back to the sharing? Did you want to say something? Uh, I. Marshfield boy, That's that. Ooh. Seth. What? You're being rude and interrupting. Oh, I'm just okay. Yes. I would. I. I like the idea of having an equitable method of producing each town's contribution, but I'm, I haven't been able to figure out where the numbers I jotted down the other night came from, but I'm a little stuck on the 7.45 increase, which somehow melts to an overall budget of 4% increase, which is- I don't get that piece. I'm sure a, taking, matter, taking, yeah, taking, the, taking them you know, trusting somebody's math that, it, that it's all in there and, and that the numbers um, work. I'm not going to say make sense. They work. The math works. I still think that five asking, I mean, we, we're going to ask every, not every, but nearly, nearly every group that's come in front of us is, is going to get, is going to get a, a haircut in terms of what they're, Requesting. They're requesting, and and I think that you know four four percent is four percent is it's it's not. I hear your your points, but asking it's not all or nothing. We could say not four three. Find five thousand dollars. Five find you know find five thousand dollars. And the math I was doing earlier is trying to figure out. What makes sense in terms of finding five thousand dollars just from Plainfield and Marshfield? If we rejigger how we calculate, maybe it's some somewhere. Um, you know, those two pieces, those two ideas can come together. But you know, oh, bottom line is, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go to Cal's taxpayers and ask them for more than three percent. And we're pretty much well, we need to look at the numbers then, drill down, and I, I, I'm I'm trying to on the fly here figure out where we cut the, the increases are well, tiny, except for dispatch, of course, mm -hmm. dispatch. Right, which but we don't have a lot of say <clears throat> over that. Well, and to Seth's point, we don't necessarily have a lot of say over any of it, but we don't. It's not our job to micromanage, except to say we need to live within a three percent budget. You guys are the experts. We mentioned that the other night on Thursday night. Yes, and we were met with a very stern, emphatic no. And as I said in the beginning, they get to propose their budget to us. We decide if we agree with it. Right. Well, so not disagree with it, whether we'll endorse it. Right, because we have to be the ones to put this on our warnings and in our line items. It's up to us whether we do it. Mm -hmm. We could shift money from the revenue from the ambulance and subsidize down to 3%. Well, we already told them they could take. 50, 50 well, no, we can demand that, and we can then come up with a formulary to to reallocate ambulance costs in a more equitable fashion, which doesn't affect their bottom line. So they should, if they have a problem with that, then that's a different set of problems. It's not a financial problem; it's a political problem, right? I mean, like they said, you know, if you look at these line items, it's not. None stand out except for like the heating dispatch. Well, the, the, the uh, equipment repair went up four grand on a percentage that's pretty high. Again, it's only four grand. And they, when we were talking about that Thursday night, it's because the equipment's getting older right. and it requires more repairs. And yeah. is it one of the ambulances that. Yeah, blew the motor. Was one of the out. ambulances, they blew the motor. And this is what I was saying. 2012. That, yeah, exactly. Ford. Is it an international? That right. diesel is the bad. No, it wasn't even that. diesel. Ford was making their own. So, you had a bad run with diesels. In this you know, the more, we, and then what this is what I'm saying, the more wear and tear there is on the equipment because of the additional services provided, which is all well and fine, and it's good because we need to help our neighbors. But at the same time, you can buy a lot of motor for 40 grand times two. That's 
80 grand. Yeah, you know, who's eating the costs of the additional repairs, fuel? Well, I, I, don't, um, know if, I don't know if we employees. are eating. I don't know if there's, from what I'm understanding, I don't know if we're paying or we're, we're uh, incurring additional wear and tear from what I'm hearing that they were running down the road for free anyway. Right. So now right. we're getting compensated. That's what they said. And that's and plus, so. I think the risk <clears throat> of your proposal of this formula, if, if we were to go to a 3% this year and have them just cut it out <clears throat> somewhere, then next year when we implement this formula that we're talking about, you folks are going to have more than a 6% increase because you're going to go, oh no, you're going to go down. Yeah, we're not even sure that we're going to do the formula. It was just a no, I mean, I think we're just right. talking about right. options right now. What do we want to do? Right. Right, but I'm saying that those options need to be considered in the long term with the second and third order effect. Yeah, this is not about gaining advantage. This is, a, you, have, you present an ar argument that's equitable, it's hard, it's easy to defend. You know, I think. Um, it's it's going to be hard to, for Marshfield and Plainfield to push back against that in terms of the ambulance. And it's just, we got to be fair, you know? Well, well yeah. the question is what's It's just as hard to earn a dollar over in the hill over there as it is here. You want to say something, Rose? Yeah, um, John wasn't um, at the meeting on Thursday night, but Toby and Ty gave us this model scenario of what full staffing would be. Yeah. And so... Pretty. It's very grim. Do you have that? Do you have that sheet? Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking of too. Yeah. And and so there's a lot more than yeah, the, like the two thirty is in their budget. Yeah, two thirty, two hundred and thirty thousand is in their budget now for salary. But if they really were full staff on all the shifts, seven oh, days a week, it would cost two hundred and eighty-four thousand. And that's without benefits. And that's without benefits. Oh. And so yeah. they talked about with the less and less volunteerism that over the next five years, yeah. we're gonna to have to add $10,000 right. every year to make, up, to make up to get to that full staffing money. And this is, and I'm just concerned too, that because of the lack of volunteerism and as Ty keeps saying and whatnot, that you know the people there, Larry Brown, Ty, some of these people Toby. devote, yeah. Toby, yeah. they're getting older, they already devote a lot of time, <laughs> when is it gonna become necessary yeah. to hire employees to run the fire department yeah. as well and this was my concern way back when everything first started so so just so you know I, I think you know but just to get back on your radar the, I think one of the dilemma dilemma we have here are is that we fund two fire departments I think we're the only town in the state of Vermont right. I know but they don't, nobody funds, likes to hear that we fund we fund two fire departments yeah. and that the one up the road north of us instead of the one that we actually are partners in and to the south of us uh, they're looking at building a million dollar station and they're talking six hundred thousand dollar trucks same kind of trucks that we're talking in these budgets and well they're so we're 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 looking at that I mean I know in my mind I'm, I'm look, looking at that in my mind's eye right and that was a fire department that we used to subsidize back in the 60s because it was cheap Bud Batch Elder got his welder out and welded a pump to the cell tanker truck and right, if Bud went around the corner too fast with it three quarters full, he almost rolled it because all the water would <laughs> But that's Bud. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how they did things. No longer did they get the welder out. They buy can't. big chromed out trucks and they've been doing that for 25 years. So I think we need to take a second look at that too. Right, um, well they're coming to us with a $40,000 increase in their budget from Woodbury Fire Department. So this is what I'm saying. Capital. We're, we're looking at increases there. We're looking at a huge increase in our school property tax rate. So we as select board members, it's our responsibility to look at the big picture. Everybody's got their little niches that they want funded. Our job is to look at the big picture, think about all the taxpayers that are already scraping and struggling to pay their property taxes. What we could do is slash East Montpelier's cost to the bone and then sell our houses and move there. <laughs> and we all win. There you go. Oh, it's not now. I was only kidding. I mean, it's a great. I mean, that's picture. a reality for us. And I know sometimes you guys, it's like you don't care. No, 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 no we it's care. Not and it's because we, we the, feel it too. The problem is that yeah, every hurting. little town has always been used to having its own school, its mm -hmm. own emergency services, mm -hmm. and they can't afford that anymore. 
That's right. That's the problem. That's why we, when our communities had, they had factories in these little towns, they had a lot of business going on, it was a whole different story. Right. The right. communities were different. Now we have bedroom communities. And the yeah. demands are higher. Right. Yeah, and we, the and demands are higher. The, the state is requiring more. Right. And, and we don't have the business activity in these little villages. And the ambulance piece is significant because of the population aging. Uh, absolutely true. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that's what I said, Less is it's going to be more expensive, and that's unfortunate. Unfortunate, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, but East Montpelier Callis is serving as sort of a regional uh, emergency service mm -hmm. area. So that's why I was thinking of trying to come up with a more equitable formula, because it looks like if we're stuck with this, then moving forward, we've got to make it as palatable as possible. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't see any way around it being more expensive. I just think it's going to be. You know, and when we look at the, when we assess the ambulance cost, we're not looking at the cost to the, or are we, uh, the building and the bond and no, that's only that ambulance gets a, that, that service, I'm just kind of looking at that. In the building, in the you know, picture on, of the building, That gets a yes. free ride. Right. It doesn't share, that, that service does not share in the overhead. Right, in terms it of the building. Share, right, and as far as upkeep and maintenance of the building, it's like free rent. So then, when you right. think about it, to be equitable, you would want to allocate that some of that overhead over the ambulance mm -hmm. service, and then allocate that across all those serve the sixty nine hundred some odd. So, so how do you do that? I thought some of that was. Um, I, I'm, I'm asking. <coughs> was a little bit of a question mark. I'm pretty there. sure it is actually. Really? Maybe not. He's just talking about spreading the costs over the ambulance too. Well, I mean, it's of the. Building. Yeah. If you remember, Toby has been very clear <coughs> that the ambulance service is not on. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. The building so, so is not is under the fire service. service. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so, I'm, so I'm saying. Right. right. And yeah. That's so that's our understanding. Yeah. And so, but there, then they should have a a rent allocation. It's just how you do it. You have if you own two little stores mm -hmm. in downtown Montpelier, you have you know Sally's perfume shop and you have Billy's car part shop and Billy and Sally are married and they just put a sheetrock wall between them, you allocate across the rent. You don't say, oh, Billy's my husband, he can have free rent and he gets all the pocket, all that money. You split the costs between Billy and Sally's businesses. They're, they're one. They are one. The budgets come in as one. So that we should be allocating the costs for the whole enterprise across both, both, both yeah. Yeah, programs. Right. And then it should all work its way down through the budget and then so maybe the our callous ambulance cost wouldn't be seventy six thousand, maybe they'd be eighty five thousand, but our fire department cost would drop commensurate. Mm -hmm. Well but, well that would have the advantage of allocating it you know some the of those added the costs, the costs to Marchfield and Plainfield. Well this is what I've been saying that it's like the ambulance there's no nothing that we get reimbursed for for Maybe the use of the word ambulance itself is not right, but the use of that building and the heat and dispatch and all that Those stuff. So where is the revenue going that the ambulance generates? It goes to the capital. Goes to the capital, right? Right. Fund. So and the and also goes to contingency fund. How much right. do we know? How much is in there? Right so now? that's the rent. That's, that's they were going to work. That's what I'm saying. That figures. could be considered yeah. equivalent. But that goes to purchase. Uh, is that supposed to be go for the capital reserve buys fire trucks mm -hmm. buys ambulances buys it's, just, it's just not clean is what i'm saying it may come out in the same way but it's harder it becomes it's hard so figure. such a web of complicated unnecessary formula well and that's formula how do you make it so that it's more fair you, out. you 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 based on a percentage allocation if the ambulance takes up 40 percent of the space you know, all the space and and utilize level of utilization is forty percent, so then you allocate forty percent of the sum total cost, the heat and everything to the ambulance. So so you're the you're line proposing that like that? for instance the example of the dispatch is proportional for fire and ambulance? Yeah, that's how they should do every every cost should be that way. Yeah. And then it's clear. Across, and then when the Marshfield and Plainfield say, Hey, we think you're ripping us off, we say, No, it's just what we're all paying. What if is we're all paying the same there's no argument. Well, what is the rationale, Kim or Seth? Um, what is the rationale for not? Oh, I don't know. Maybe is they there don't. a account? We're not, a, a not what? We're not we're splitting not, the costs on one. We're not allocating. Yeah, I mean, like in building two, it should say ambulance 
pays part of it and the fire department. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Is I, it, I don't know what the rationale is. It, well, yeah, okay. So there could be one. It's just a, a, an accounting or a tax or a... I don't even ask proof. No, no, the, the yeah. rationale is exactly what we said at the beginning. There isn't any. No, there is one. <laughs> the ambulance service from the very beginning was treated as an add-on. Mm -hmm. Right. So all the base costs yeah. were attributed to the fire department. Right. But you're it's always been at, that. And they compensate. But there's no reason why we can't change yeah. it. Well, as far as as far as anybody knows, that's all it is. If there's no secret reason that somebody maybe to Toby knows for no. why you or I, I think why no, we've hey, we've Toby. flushed that, that out. Well, plus okay. this predates Toby, predates Ty. Okay. All right, this isn't yeah. new. Yeah. Okay. So how much money does the ambulance take in that goes into? The reserve fund. Could we change that? The cat we already did. We said they could take fifty no, thousand for. But no, but what's the total amount that goes? What's the total revenue that the ambulance? Wasn't it eighty five or eighty six? So well, why not change? Yes. Yeah. Why we, not? We've got the audit yeah. figures from twenty eighteen. Okay, so let me finish. So why could we not change the proportion of that money that goes in to support the ambulance and reduce the cost? You could. What? You could do the same thing you did three years ago, four years ago, whatever it was, and say, we want you to take 15,000, not give them the option, just say, take 15,000 off the top, right, and decrease the cost to East Montpelier. Right, and then we come back to them and say, next year, we want to work on a formula that better and more fairly distributes the costs. And I don't know whatever happened to that committee that Jean was doing some budget committee with the fire oh, department. Yeah, with Don Welch. And Don Welch. Whatever happened to that? Because they were supposed to get invited to board meetings to. <laughs> if, if you notice, the numbers actually are much better than last year. Yeah. And the reason they were bringing uh, the woman from Bobby Bill Seattle mm -hmm. was precisely because of that discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that when you had questions at the quarterly meetings or whatever they were calling them now, you could get your answers. So I think. Dark. What I'd like to, to propose is that we ask them to take however many dollars out of this ambulance, whatever reserve the fund. reserve fund, whatever the name of it is, to offset the increases this year. And then put in writing now so that they know next year that we want to have input or they need to propose a formula to make the cost sharing more equitable across the four towns. And you're in, in, right, including uniform. the usage of the building, the maintenance of the building, heat, oil, yeah. all the electricity, all those things that are currently now in the fire department budget mainly, but which gets the benefit of to the ambulance. And this is a different business model than three years ago. Right. When they, or wherever they came up with this approach. It's I mean, different. We now have a four town ambulance right. service, so it's different. Right. So we it should be different. approaching it differently. And, you know, one day Marshfield and Plainfield might say, "We're paying an ambulance fee, and you're, we're subsidizing your fire trucks." They might. And we're and we're paying for a fire department, too. So we're just like. So we need so, to. So, right. so we need to. We need to be ahead start of the clean, game here. and so we're not doing that. Right, and I think if we try to do that now, it's this far into the budget process, it's not going to happen. But we can ask them to take a substantial more amount out of that reserve fund. Well, you're not, you know, wait. Let me just clarify what you're saying. It would come out of the ambulance revenue. Right. It doesn't come out of the reserve funds because once it goes in reserve funds, it's already there. Yeah. It's already been allocated. Future revenue. So you're talking about taking out of revenue, but we already talked about this last year, didn't we not, Bruce? Mm -hmm. We talked about it, but we didn't demand that they do it. We gave right. them the option to and do it. And that was up to fifth. Remember, the problem has been yeah. they like to talk about staffing. We like to talk about mm -hmm. volunteerism going downhill, and mm -hmm. we can't continue to put this kind of stress on mm -hmm. uh, Larry and Ty and stuff. Mm -hmm. They can't get the staffing. Mm -hmm. So even if we gave them 300000 they can't spend it. But they get it from Connecticut. That's where the Connecticut That's troops came, came from. from. But right. there was only so much of that. And they do oh, do that. There's a limit. <laughs> well, I don't know that there's a limit. How many people people want to come, come up here and the, do that? The, the, the story told us that every guy with a snowboard what was dreaming of coming to Vermont and hanging out in <laughs> a fire station and on their off time racing down the... Who said the that? Who That's that? what they were saying. <laughs> All these guys, they, they, Vermont's the, the mecca for snowboarders and skiers, and they, they're like, hey, I'm getting paid to go on a ski trip. 
That's what we were told. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Like, Let, I want to get back to the money that we could take out of ambulance revenue. Was it fifty thousand? Well, that's what we gave them the option of. Yes. The same discussion we had. Every penny you take out is a penny that doesn't go into the. I know. Fund. That was the next the, and point. What's the pro and what is the danger of that? Because then Just you don't have money. They come back for that fire engine right. that you know they're coming. No thanks. Right. That you know they're coming back for. Well, that's coming out of your vote. With the voters next so year. what they said, what they said, okay, let me just do some round numbers. If you have $100,000 of ambulance yeah. revenue, which is about what it is, if you take $50,000 and put it in salary, then you only have $50,000 to put into your capital reserve. Right. Okay? So that and that means future that your purchases? future pur purchases are mm -hmm. going to be impacted significantly when you don't have the $100,000 a year. So that's why they've been resistant about taking that money. That. Okay. But it so are they the true cost of buying trucks. But why no, but when they come to us to, but when they come to us to buy no, an no, ambulance, I know what you mean. Yeah. When they come to us to buy an ambulance or a truck, we can push back and say, What would it cost to get a used one or a demo? They don't like that any more than Woodbury likes it, we found out. But if they have to, they have to. <laughs> that I I don't care yes, about that. I'm just telling you why they have not taken money out of the ambulance mm -hmm. revenue to put towards salaries is because they want to protect the capital reserve. I'm just saying that as a blanket no, statement. I get exactly right. what they're doing. Okay, so, but if you say right now, or we say, well, you've got to take the money out of the ambulance revenues to cover your increased costs, then we can do that. We've already had a discussion. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can say, whatever the increase is, if we don't have any increase, we can say you've got to take twenty-five dollars or $30,000 right out of your ambulance revenues to cover this increased cost. And they just won't have as much money in the capital right. reserve. What they're going to tell you is, oh, well, we're not going to be able to buy that new truck, you know. So well, that's no, 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 what no. happens is there are. They told us Monday night, Thursday night, just so you know, that this ambulance that needs these repairs, they're going to need to replace it soon. So, just so you know that, and you know how much those cost. Yeah. Not as much as a fire truck, but the, a lot. The problem is, you 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 develop this capital reserve. You know, the money's really born out of the ambulance program, which is its costs are elevated by that same amount and so it's a way that you know it's it's uh, what's what's the term they call it uh, it's escaping me arbitrage that, and that's where we're, we're we're slip sliding money all over the place but at the end of the day it comes out of the same pockets okay and, but you and, and, and what happens is when we go to the voters at town meeting that six hundred thousand dollar truck with the chrome bells well, it's only going to cost because we're so responsible and fiscally prudent. No, we're not. But we we've, we've been able to save three hundred thousand. That truck's only costing you three. You're getting a six hundred thousand dollar truck for three hundred. No, we're not. We're getting a six hundred thousand dollar truck for six hundred. We just took the money out of the ambulance. You, you know, right. this is right. a but shell game. I understand sinking funds and all that, but I don't like. If we're gonna have a sinking fund, what's everything's got to be on the table here. Enough of the game. If we're gonna, if we need to set aside a percentage of our budget toward sinking fund or whatever you call it, the equipment fund, then let's do that. And it's a percentage, and that then that's a line item. But this taking from the ambulance, nobody really knows, and moving it over here, I don't like that. I don't like it. And you know, one day Marshfield and Plainfield, when they become true partners in this, are going to scream bloody murder, and rightly so. And it's going to cause all that discord, and then it's, then we're going to fix it, and then it's going to be ugly. Right. I'm just trying to think just, of a way to make it so that it's more fair. The the hit that everybody's trying to, that they want us to take isn't so bad. And yes, they're probably going to have to buy another ambulance next year or the year after, but they can buy a used one as long as it's not like the one they bought from Montpelier that they bought and then we had to get rid of it right away. Well, I'm just telling you, the easy way to avoid increases in your budget is just mandate to take the increase out of your capital, out of your uh, Ambulance revenues. Let's That's the easy way to do it. Let's do it this year. Okay, but the other thing, or you can just do it so it's only a two percent increase. But I want take, take take whatever you need out of off the top of the ambulance revenues to get it to a two percent increase. If you feel that that would be easier to defend to your uh, voters, we're saying three we're just going to go two percent because two percent is easier to defend. We're saying three percent. We said three. Because we're our whole budget is based on three percent. Okay, two point eight, but we're okay. saying three, so that would work. But I want to I yeah. want to make sure that going forward, 
that the two boards are on the same page and one board isn't going to say one thing and one board isn't going to say another. But this has to be I understood. But I, I, wanna, I wanted to say one thing about the shell game. Because you can play that another way. You could say, and you could do the formula, what would it cost to the voters or the taxpayers in these two towns to hire the ambulance service from an outside source? I'm not bitch. I think the no, no, I'm just telling awesome. you. I'm just telling you, if you want to do it, it's so it's a different cost. Yeah. If it's great value, then you go with it. But if you want to find out another way of funding this, so it might cost less money to the taxpayers, is you still keep the fire department, you buy equipment because you do not long, you won't have ambulance revenue anymore, and you hire the ambulance service in. You do away with the ambulance service. We're not going to get ambulance cheaper than no. we got. Okay, then. We know that. Then, then you have it. Then right, I, that's right. what you it's have. It's just about. And it's about response time. And it's fine to do the accounting and more accurately, but yeah, if you so. want to do something different and say, okay, we will buy the fire trucks, just like you just said. Yeah. You said, let's make a percentage of our budget go towards equipment replacement yeah. of the fire department. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to cost you 300000 or $100,000 a year to put money in a fund to replace the fire equipment. Mm -hmm. And then you hire the ambulance service in, it's going to cost you another 100000 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Then you have a comparison to what this is costing you and what that would cost yeah. you. Yeah. That's long-term. If you term, want to do that. We're not, talking, that's, we're not talking about that right it now. It doesn't have to be long-term. You can say, we'll do it next year. I'm just saying that. Right. I'm not advocating that. Put everything that. on the table. I'm just, I'm not advocating that because I think the ambulance That's service does a exercise. great job. Is going to, all I'm, my point was with the ambulance service that we have right now, mm -hmm. they do a great job, it's going to cost yeah. more money. Yep. That was my point originally. Yep. Yep. And I'll stick to that. But I'm just saying, if you want to compare something, you could say, we'll hire the ambulance service to come in and we'll just replace the trucks. Because yeah. the argument always is that these capital reserve that we build up with the ambulance revenues funds the equipment, which it does. It does. Mostly. Unless we keep taking it. Right. Exactly. Right. Unless we keep taking it for salaries. So, uh, which <laughs> is what we've done. If we, we haven't done well, it. Well, we potentially. Yes. I, w I just, right. we right. keep talking about three or four percent. The math, I did the math again just to be sure that I was rem remembering from the other night. So it's about $5,000. And that's a 1% increase lost. But it's, it's, it's under 1% of the total budget. budget. It's, it's really very... Mm -hmm marginal right to say three so, percent not four well you can take that either way but right. to go to the to go to the voters and say three percent and i'd rather say two we held it i'd at, rather we say held it at the rate of inflation i'd That's rather true. say two as well um that? because every, a lot of other so services want, are going to increase you want to decrease the budget by eleven thousand dollars uh, in order to exactly. get your well, 2%? Is well, that what you're we're, we're not talking about decreasing the budget. We're, ta we're talking about decreasing the proposed rate of increase. The, you want to decrease budget. the proposed budget by 11000 to meet your 2%. Is that what you're saying? That would be 2%. 2%, 2 11, 3 percent to 11. I mean, how many people in this room are getting a 3% raise? Two. Okay. And where is all the money? Then how are the taxpayers supposed to come up with these and increases? Every year we meet, there are more and more taxpayers on a percentage basis on going to retirement and having or less their incomes. Right. It's a big deal. It's, it's, and, you it's know, we tough. need to practice at this because five years from now, this is going to be a really, really big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If we want our neighbors to stay our neighbors and not, you know, quite frankly, all the rich people from down country to come in here and buy the places and push us all out of our places by elevating the cost to live here even further. I mean, that's reality, man. I mean, in a, in a defense, that's a trade. Well, it affects the people at the fire station just as much. They're mostly residents of East Montpelier or Callis. So it affects their tax bills as well. And it's not all about the money because we need the services and they provide an excellent service, both fire and ambulance, that's not, I don't want to take away from that. <laughs> but I'm just trying to make the point that people cannot afford these increases. So which number are you trying to lower? <laughs> and that's, that's, that's that was in the details mm -hmm. here. Yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, so which of those the percentage increase total? Which one? 7.45, I mean, Or the 4.09. The 4.09 includes, remember we made, 
the Calus and East Montpelier budgets are making up that $10,900 they shifted into this year's budget from the insurance underpayment. Yeah. So that's a that's an immediate eleven thousand that you've already picked up, right? And you've got to remember that when you're looking at those percentages. Okay. On the FY nineteen, see where it says fund balance. That was it. Was that the insurance, or is that the money out of the fund? No, that was the insurance. Then why do they call it fund balance? It should say insurance. Because when it runs from one year to the next, it becomes part of your fund balance. Oh, that's right. Right, <laughs> right but it's hard to remember that that was the insurance. What line item is that? Well, 5502. Oh, there. Okay. I'm looking at this sheet. Oh. Is it 10, 8, 30, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, fun bill. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, they're not going to like right. us coming to them for. Sure. Well, it's just right well, it depends the on what you're doing. Oh, okay. If you're yeah. actually yeah. asking them to decrease the budget, they're not going to like it. You're just ordering them to take it off the top. It doesn't really decrease the budget. Right. It decreases your capital reserve fund, which you'll feel in. Three Five years, years instead right. of exactly. exactly. So, so you just I push it down the road. I don't know. You know, it's it's a tough call. It really it's is. It's a tough but call. Some, yeah. But we have to do something at some point because it can't just be every year they come to us and flat out tell us, "Sorry, we can't make well, any." We're, no, we're not. Well, make we're, any we're, we well, talked about a couple of different things here. One, right. uh, uh, allocating the money differently between the town. Right. But I mean, what really I think really was upsetting Thursday night. Was when we said, you know, just kind of off the top that, you know, we're talking about budget, what would you say if we asked you to do it 3%? And they were not very nice about their response. True. And it's is that, true. they don't, well, and, and, you know, it's, that, it's supposed to be working. That kind of conversation, when, when they came in looking for a $600,000 trust. I will say, yeah. we're supposed to be working together, the three entities. Yes. This is supposed to not be a battle of who has more power. This is about the budget. Of the three entities, is it is it our place to tell them where it has to come from? No. I mean, they could propose that it come from the same. It is. We don't. We fund it according to something we're comfortable with, and if they don't, we give them nothing. I mean, that's really where we're at. I mean, we do have the power. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to think about it as if I'm walking a mile in the other man's moccasins. So if I'm Ty, or if I'm Toby, or if I'm Larry Brown. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Don't be rude. She was looking for a copy of something. I'm allowed to say that you're not. So if I'm, if I'm Ty, or Toby, or Larry Brown, and I'm, I've put effort into this, and I'm working very hard, and I'm tired, and I'm physically depleted, and I'm mentally spent, and I go before a board and I say, here's my budget, I put a lot of work into this, this is minimalist, the only expansion you're going to see is this, and I've compensated for it by this, and the, and the one thing that the board says is, go to 3%, I'm going to throw up my hands and say, are you kidding? You come in here and work and don't we get any sleep and put this together. This happens to us as select board members, boards all the time. We put all this work in, we go to town meeting, and people nitpick line by line by line. It happens all the time, but they have to face the reality. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. You're absolutely well, and I'm, right. I'm just trying to frame it in from the context from their of, point of view. their point of view. Right. But they have to also look at things from our point of view, and I don't think that happens as often as I it should. I, you, there was a, for me, and, and it wasn't exactly the same truck they were looking for when they were looking for $600,000 truck, but there was a lesson there. Was, if you recall, I'm one of the guys who pushed back and said, over my dead body, you're going to buy a brand new truck without first looking around, scouting the, the territory and see yeah. what might be out there. And they're like, well, nothing's out there. There's no reason to look. So then we kind of gave them the thumbs down. We got the ugly eyeball. And lo and behold, what, what happens is the impossible. And it's happened now twice. What happened in Woodbury? Well, they were lucky. That'll never happen again. And then it basically happened again. So I think when there's too much money in the reserve fund and it's too easy to buy a $600,000 truck, you're going to work a little less hard. And not that I want to put more burden on them, but, you know, the, we're getting to real numbers here. Halves of millions of dollars and more. And it, I think it's, it's important that, you know, taxpayers at some level understand the full cost and we all understand full, co full cost and we don't hide what the costs are. Because at the end of the day, people are like, well, if you kept saving us all this money and we got the truck that price, why are my taxes higher? Right. 
Because at the end of the day, the tax bill is still the same. I mean, you guys don't hear this over in East Montpelier, why are my taxes going up? Oh, no. Sure. It's all over the place. Very good. So we haven't heard from Amy or Cliff. Did you guys have anything you wanted to say? or? Well, I went back and looked. Um, both of the uh, Marshfield and Plainfield contracts are up for negotiation right now according to some of the notes that they gave us on the uh, FY20 budget. So I would definitely advocate in terms of looking to reapportion um, the contributions of these two towns. Mm -hmm. um, I would also advocate, um, coming back to a point that John made, as this process rolls forward from year to year, Plainfield and Marshfield will continually be looking at increases. And at some point, John is absolutely right. They're going to say, well, wait a minute. We're just doing the ambulance portion. And it seems like a lot of that money is going to fund you guys' fire department. We need to shake up these columns and um, make sure that we can justify those increases that they're going to be questioning a year from now, two years yeah, from now, five years from now. Make it more fair so that we have any, so we can say this is the reality. It's what Barrytown did to us. Remember what one of the principal reasons we left Barrytown? Other than them showing up 45 minutes later. Um, it's because we were funding their, the town's entire, as I remember it, the ta that town was paying zero for their ambulance because all the other towns, we're member funding. towns, were funding it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not that bad, obviously. But and all the money goes in into the town, town yeah. coffers in Barrytown. So it buys roads. Oh, it goes into the general fund. It goes into the general fund. Right. Yeah. I don't love the idea of the shell game, and I thought that that was what you said about maybe having too much money in the capital fund is a disincentive to be frugal. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people have studied extensively how much the capital fund should have in these instances. I don't know. Does anybody know offhand? No, they're not. Okay, so anything. nobody's really done the grand formula as to what makes they, sense. I asked them about the capital reserve, and they said they'd try to get some stuff to us by Monday, which I guess they didn't, because yeah. I was like, well, what are you going to need in the capital reserve? Right. I and mean, that's always a big question, but they are not very good about making the plan for replacement fees. Oh, we're not going to have to replace that truck. And then, as and then, Denise well, said, oh, yeah. now they can talk about replacing the engines. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they, that's kind of what they do. They just... They don't stick to a plan, really, a very organized plan. So they they just want to get money in it. Mm -hmm. And there isn't very much money in it right no, now. No, hundred and so the way they're buying anything no. going forward is on time. Right. And it, now it, it is. Remind me, are we? Do we have two separate capital plans? One for fire, one for ambulance? No. No. Yeah, they should be. Well, capital not really. I mean, maybe they should have a separate reserve fund for each, because then you have a better understanding of. We just did this with Absolutely. the town hall, town office. We had one reserve fund for both. We just split it so we know how much money is available for work yeah. on the town hall, how much is work, money is available for work on the town office. They shouldn't be combined into one. Mm -hmm. Well, then, then, then you have subsets within a certain yeah. fund of money. What's, what's the difference? Oh, okay. What's the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Your plan yeah. has splits, but yeah. your yeah. fund doesn't. The fund is just a pot of money, and you just subset it yeah. out. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying it should be... This is how much we've put aside for ambulance right. replacement. It can be in, vehicle yeah, costs. yeah, it can be yeah. in your. Right. I mean, it can all be in one account, but you should yeah. be able to account for it. Well, they 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 tried like to do a, that. Yeah, they tried to do that. It's just that I just don't remember seeing anything recently. Yeah. So I asked Toby about it. And he said he'd get something about it, but right. he didn't. But um, because um, of course we need to know that that yeah. truck's going to need to be replaced. This one, that one, that one. And it's and it sometimes I feel like they. We trust them, you know? I mean, we trust them to do this work, and it's not easy, and they spend a lot of time doing it. And I mean, the amount of hours they put in to training a new person is unbelievable. And then they leave. Right. Yeah. Um, we talked about that Thursday night. Is there some way to make an incentive mm -hmm. so somebody stays once the department's paid for the training? Um, Does the department pay the full amount of the training? No. Never not all of it. No but sometimes they've, they've helped. And then the person gets all trained and then they leave. You guys are remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really, business. I would not want to be in their <coughs> shoes, as you, as you said. But we're in our shoes and we have to be responsible. 
in a, you know, and in supporting them plus thinking about so bottom if, lines. If, if your board would like to target 2%, and that equates to 11000 ish dollars, there was an early discussion where we said 3%. Mm -hmm. And that would be 5200 5500 I was saying 3. You were saying 3, and I think, Sherry, you started off saying 3. I started with 3 the other night, yeah. Yeah. So, so how much money? Fifty-five hundred is a lot less than eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. I can please don't use that. No, you got to start with that ten nine. You're replacing. Right. So you've got right. to add that to it. Yeah, that's right. Right. Say that again. Yeah. The ten nine is just a one shot deal. It's just added into this budget. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right. And you've so got to really replace be, it. Right. Yeah. So. So it's really anything gonna be starts with that moves up. That was a shortfall carried forward. Yeah. Yeah. It was the extra money that they had. Oh, they it's put, extra money. Yes. Yeah, they just changed the, the timing of their insurance the payment. But that was FY19, the 10, But it's carried over. One. It's not carried oh. over. Oh. You see that number that says, oh, but you're saying the percentage yeah. increase should be based on yeah. backing that number out, because that wasn't part of the budget, right? Do you see the So figure out whatever that number was. Got Do it. you see the 499 number? Yeah. That is the total for the Where FY19 on the green and white one. Yeah. yeah. On the right FY19 here. total number all the way across, it says 499456. Yes. That is $51,000 higher than what you guys were working with right. last year at this time. Mm -hmm. Their budget got amended oh, way above what we were working with. That's right. So you've got to remember that that, that number last year, when we were looking at it, was really 448. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's now exploded from 448 up to 519 in one right. year. But that yeah. includes the 40,000 for Marshfield right. for the ambulance service staffing. So right. you got to kind of offset the 50,000 you guys said they could pull out of the aim. This all kind of ties together. But you've got to remember this is a huge increase from what you were looking at at this time last year. We're just because 448. Of the 10, because right. of the 10831. And the, the 40,000 for Marshfield. Which was fifty thousand. So it was fifty fifty thousand. So that got added in, and then they put another twenty thousand on top of that. Okay, right. Wow. But the fund balance that's, that's just 70, that's 000. just a time. So that's actually a huge increase. increase. That's seventy thousand. Oh. No, that that's, actually, that's your seven hundred. It's funny money. It's so the fifty four forty eight, but the four forty eight money. Here, but, it's but the four forty eight was this. <laughs> gotcha. That okay, means. so it's ten after eight. What do you what? So that's the reason I only raised the budget by that added do small dollar increment because they already had the forty plus the ten, the ten or eleven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're not so going to have next year. But, that, but in FY twenty, they're not going to have that ten. No. Right. Was that backed out for the twenty? FY twenty. Now, what you got to remember is that four percent increase is a fake. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's right. Closer, the, real, the real increase is closer to 7.5. Yes. And that's, that's why I couldn't if you figure just, out where they got the 4% from. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. the 4% is real if you to play. Right. No. Apples to apples. The, the impact is 4%, real. but yes. the reality is 7.45. So, so, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. okay the 7.45 is, is that's above the 448, 44, no, no, that's about what you budgeted last year. 448. No, 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 forget that number. Okay. Look at your own line numbers. That's what you care about. You okay. care about what you're paying more okay. so lots of discussion. year to year. Calus yes, okay. that's, the, that's the number, right, 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 right. 152 to 161. Or, yeah. Okay, 76 to the 80 for you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. That's and the then number. Fire is That's our contributions. Right. That you're saying, yeah, of course. 113 to 124 and 56 to 62. Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's like I said, now it's almost quarter after eight. What would you like to do? I want to keep the discussion going on yeah. this money because we're making progress. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, um, Callis is looking at paying for fire service another 6,000. Not quite. 5,500. Yeah, 5,500. And then um, mm -hmm. for the ambulance, they're looking at paying another 6500 Oh, no, 4000 4500 That's right. 
ten thousand dollars is what Calus will be paying over last year to seven point four five. Yeah, because last year it was one thirty three, and this year it's one forty three. So ours is a ten thousand dollar increase. Yes. And <coughs> to get that down to a number you would be comfortable with, mm -hmm. what would that percentage increase? Would Would you want to have? Well, what percentage increase? Because I don't have a calculator. With seven percent increase. So that's that seven point four five. Yes, the ten thousand. So <coughs> we were talking either two or three. So you're talking roughly half. Right. Five thousand. 5,000 is going to put you in the middle somewhere. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, hang on. Let's do, it, let, let, let's yeah. do it clean. Yeah. Not 5,000, <coughs> uh, 3%. Times All right, one. so just take those two. 6,000. It's half of what? 1, 3, 3, 1, 3, 3. 3.5%. Three no, it's 4% is what you have to get out of there. 3% three. Three of Callus's. FY 2019 is 39.95.51. That's three. So that would we would. So that's okay. three. Thirty-nine. Ninety-five. Fifty-one is three percent. That's over 3 the one thirty-three, Sharon. Yes. Yes. Two percent is twenty-six sixty-three. So you need you need seven thousand dollars off the top for a year to get to your three percent. Right. Now, now let's do each month. Six thousand, but it's. You just yeah, double six it. Thousand. Just double right. it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's double. Right, true. Exactly double. Exactly. That part is easy. <laughs> oh, gee, one third, two thirds. Right. <laughs> Thirty-nine ninety-five. Fifty-one. Yeah. 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 Thirty-nine
<coughs> and theirs would be double, so it would be 21,000, as Ruth said. 8 plus 4 is 12,000, right. 3%. Um, Twelve thousand. So are we saying? So they're going to have to take out of the capital reserve. Well, uh, eighteen. Well, they, they can for three percent, it's eighteen. Yes. Give or take. Yeah. For the two percent, it's twenty-two five. Give I, or take. I'd say I, go to three. I don't think we should assume that it has to come from capital reserves. I mean, no. I mean, that's ambulance, ambulance revenue before they but deposit it. No, not assume. So we can tell them to. No, but no. Let. I think we we can say this is what we'd like to see and they can come back to us and say well can we take it don't they have to ask us permission to use money out of that fund they're not taking out of the fund we'll the ambulance re no the ambulance reserve no we're not taking out of reserve they're going to take it out of revenue, revenue that comes in before it gets positive we can tell them oh, to do that right now in advance of it going in Oh, and it, oh, so it wouldn't go in, it would get used before it goes in. That's right. Okay. It's in the okay, budget. Gotcha. But gotcha. why do we want to assume that that, that, it ha that has to happen that way? Why, do we, why, why wouldn't we assume that if they sharpen their pencils, they can find some other savings? Well, we don't. I think we just say this is the amount, and then they might say, <coughs> well, we can s s sharpen our pencils a little bit here and there, and then... I, I don't see savings, yeah. guys. I don't know what you're going to do. Have them, have them, like just not eat the building like, on a warm yeah. day. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't but well, know. what I can see I them doing, you increase the revenue side either. F and if it's not from us, then you go to Plainfield or Marshfield. And that's why I was suggesting we have a fairer, you know, allocation of costs and, right. and all going that. Forward, that's so then we can have an honest conversation, four-way conversation. I think they need to be partners because then, absolutely, when things get expensive like diesel engines, they're going to be putting their shoulder into it too. Right. That's why I don't think this year we can go and say you need to use this formula for Plainfield and Marshfield. I think we have to do that going forward because there's not enough time right now to, so to do that. Is there anybody here that would consider agreeing to this budget with the letter going forward saying we're going to increase on some formula because if you do those numbers it accomplishes what we're talking about. If, you, if Plainfield goes to 60 and Marshfield goes to 72 that accomplishes what you're trying to obtain. There's Marshfield right over there. Yeah, Marshfield. And he's laughing at you, but that's all right. Uh, okay, so <laughs> this is the actual session. You don't hear anything. That. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Contractual <laughs> discussion. No, 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 no. He's here as an attorney. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. Are you saying that we should approve their budget request? I'm saying, year? is there anybody that's considering We're approving going. the budget for this year as proposed, <laughs> with a letter that says, "Hey, not going to happen next year." Here's your boundaries, left and right boundaries for next year. Let's come up with a formula. You know, we'll write the letter that says, "Hey, going forward, this because I think I think you're right. There, there's not a lot of real wiggle room in here. I don't see it. No, but we're talking about using the future money from the ambulance service, which will then kick the can down the road further for mm -hmm. capital. It's yeah? okay. So I want to say one thing. There is potential for taking, getting more money into the capital reserve or the ambulance revenue from the town of Marshfield because they were only doing 50% of the calls before. They're going to be doing 100% of the calls now. So there is potential for taking in some money. They thought that's more that's ambulance not revenue. Here. So asking them to take $18,000 off the top is not a hardship. And it does reduce the town's contribution, which is, as you say, very aptly, it makes it more palatable for the voters. That's a good point. So to keep it at three percent, which I think is fair, and taking eighteen thousand dollars off the top and telling them to do that is nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And I, I would think that they might be expecting that we're going to come back with something. We're not just going to say, okay, whatever you want. I think maybe they might have got that message Thursday night in some way, shape, or form. You know, you know food for thought. If you if you're looking at dispatch, we hate the dispatch costs. We're all partners in the dispatch program now, but if you remember how it started, it was Montpelier providing dispatch, and we, just like Plainfield and Marshfield, mm -hmm. they were, we were giving them some money toward covering some of their costs. Yep. And then they finally got to where we're, we're, we're moving toward, and they said, no, we gotta allocate this across everybody and come up with a formulary and, and make this all on, on mm -hmm. paper, equitable for all involved. And that's where we're at today for better and worse um, with dispatch. And I think 
And there we're going to be in a partnership with Plainfield and Marshfield in the long term. This is not going to be a little contract. And the, and the fire department, when in all fairness, they, they aren't happy about the dispatch costs either. No, they're not. And, you know, technically 9% apparently doesn't even really cover the increases. Yeah, they're expecting it long term to keep, yeah, to keep going up and up and up. Okay, so, so are we on board with the 3% and the 18000 out of the uh, neighborhood revenue? Yeah. Does everybody think that's a good idea? Yeah, okay. Do you think it's a good idea? So essentially what you're going to do, if, if you approve that, I'll create a revised version. It'll take approximately 6000 out of your ambulance contribution, mm -hmm. 12000 out of East Montpelier's. There'll be a new line right under the Marshfield line that will say ambulance revenue usage. Mm -hmm. That'll be 18000 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the numbers will stay the same except mm -hmm. those three. Right. Okay. Okay. So I got one more thing to say. Okay. If if everyone's on board with that, then we can move the conversation to a possible study of allocating the cost difference, ambulance cost differently between the town. Mm -hmm. I would never say we're going to do this. I would say we need to look at this. Of course, right. obviously. We need and, to look and, at and 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 that's yeah. the way you start the conversation. You need a partnership in looking at it. Right, and there's no reason why we can't request a meeting outside of the usual meeting schedule to start talking about this. I think it behooves us to be the ones proposing and suggesting and trying to create an environment where you know they we have a discussion about this. We could do it at a select board meeting in East Montpelier or here. It doesn't have to be at the fire station, but I think we need to start the discussion like right after town meeting because otherwise it'll go by and it'll be budget season again and we'll be right back where we started. Well, we need to, we, we need to put our heads together, create a letter that yep. puts these ideas forth in yep. a palatable way yep. and, and look at this. Yep. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's number two. So number one is first the yep. 3% and the 18,000 out of the angles revenue. Okay, is so, that, is, are you making that as a motion? I'll make that, a, well, I don't usually make motions, but no, I'll make I'm a motion. chairman, but Kim makes a motion. I'll make the motion. You can make motions. We can, but we don't usually. We don't usually, but no, okay. I try to avoid We try to lead time. everyone to the trough, and right. then somebody will drink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, would somebody on the Callis board like to make a similar or same motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there any further discussion before the board's vote? I just want to say, you know, I have a long history with EMFD and my heart is kind of breaking here. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be honest about that. All right. All those in favor, Callis, please say aye. 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 Ms. Montpelier? We already voted. We already voted. Oh, you're yeah. good. I didn't hear you vote. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so Rose, I, I am sensitive to um, your thoughts on the matter because you've been involved for so long time. Yeah. Well, I. And I, I do respect what you have to say about it. Thank you. Yeah. I um. I feel that when Ty said what he said Thursday night, like no, no, I can't, and you hit the nail on the head. He worked so hard, and they all worked right. so hard putting that budget. And they're spent, and they're tired, and they're exhausted. And they took the hose testing out, and they took the ambulance tax out. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like yeah. they gave it their all. And it mm -hmm. really, I know, and it really isn't. There's no easy balance because there's not. no way that we could really say how much we appreciate, you know. And, I mean, um, you know, we tell them, I, I just get so worried about mm -hmm. them because... How much longer can this go on? Those you know? three guys well, cannot do it. Right. And that's the thing is, and I think the idea that maybe Seth is one of the ideas of, you know, what would it take to contract that out might take a huge burden off them because, like, they, you know, they're not getting any younger. They all have families. They all yeah. spend yeah. so much time between both duties. It's really a huge yeah. burden. I well, but, yeah. So at, at this point, though, we're not saying no to the budget. And we're not right. saying this right. right. We right. we right. we right. we're funding them, but right. we're just doing it a little bit differently. Right. And I do understand the concern about the capital reserve, but eighteen thousand dollars 
and they also have the potential to get some more money in. Right, right. I, well, I think it's a fair ahead. Of what they it, it's still this a middle fair. road. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then the idea yeah. of trying to trying to take in money a little bit more money from the other towns to make this more equitable. I think that's fair. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that's no, kind I, of what I, I, and I and I appreciate what they're doing. You. And you got to hear what I when I said in the beginning. I, I do not want to nickel and dime this to death no. because they're going to salaries. Yeah. It's going to cost more money it to is. the towns, yeah. and that's a given yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And I think that it's a given, and I'm not saying anything different. I don't want to give up on it. Yeah. I just say it's going to cost more yeah. money. I think the biggest thing is, is we need to work on this together with them. This isn't them yeah. and it alone. Exactly. Yeah. You know, not to make it make them feel like no, 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 that's, you know. that's the problem right. you don't want to make them feel like right. we're nickel and diamond to death we and don't trust what they're doing right. because right. you got to feel that when they that's, put this budget together you're going to have to trust them yeah. I'm, I'm always I, trusting I, them. I always yeah. trust them yeah. Yeah. but they've got to feel that yeah, yeah. right yeah right yeah. and they that's probably different. initially aren't going to feel that way when they get the letter and they see the motions but i think that if they think about it it's their two towns too it's their yeah. towns right right and it's it's trying to have a vision for the future. Yeah, I mean, that's what right. it's, it's not 1964 anymore, no. and it's not welding a pump no, on the side of an oil tanker. I mean, that's, that's how far we've you know, gone. Like, that's yeah. not even yeah. legal anymore. No. Yeah. But so. I think our letter can can be very nicely done. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, we can get the message across. You know, it's everybody's problem, not just theirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's true across the state and across the country. It's just the we all have to be thinking about this. Well, the point needs to be made right up front is that we realize that the volunteers have worked endless hours right? and that we need to shift some of the burden from them to salaried employees. Right. Or, yep. So yep. that needs to be put right up front. I think we, yeah, we so say we're that, not going to cut right. that. Right. 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 We say that right up front as part of the letter. I think that opens the door for them to realize that we realize and see what is happening. I feel their pain. You know, I look at them when we go to meetings and they look exhausted. You know, so you, you, so you can't always react, you know, you can't have a knee-jerk reaction when Ty gets annoyed mm -hmm. right. because we know Ty reacts a little bit that way anyway, mm -hmm. but you can't react to that. You're going to have to no. say, well, you no, know, but that's they, the way but they have to be open to communicating and having a discussion. They really do. And so, on that note, who from your board and who from our board would be that line of communication? In other words, can we soften the blow of the letter, even though the letter is going to be nice and it's going to say well, nice we're going to review the letter. Mm -hmm. Right, but, but after that letter is prepared, somebody should take the time to go and visit them and say, hey, here's what's going to happen. Yep. And this is how it's going to happen. And we want to be partners in that process. Right. And I think if we say that, we want to, I think I like the word partners to be put in the letter, that we want to be partners in the process of making some change to help them going forward. But my point is... I know, who the, the, the who's bodies? Gonna, who's the person that's going to have the face-to-face? -face? Well, let's do the let's get the letter done. Right. And then both boards can decide who's going to be the manpower, woman power behind going to meet with them. I like woman power. Even if I were a woman, I'd like woman power. Okay, that's, you heard that. I'm not trying to get out of work. You heard that here first, right, guys? Here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm okay with women. I'm okay with getting to the business in here. Yeah, me too. All right. So, going forward, I guess we're ready to be done with this discussion or not? And if we want to get together again after the holidays and stuff to have further discussion and ideas, no, no I get We can do that. We can come to East Montpelier for a meeting. Yeah, we'll we'll take it into consideration. Okay, you do that. <laughs> you guys can invite us to the Christmas party. You want to come? It's the it's the you town. It's the appreciation party for the town employees. Well, we could make an exception. But we could make an exception. Why not? That'd be fun. I think it would be very fun. We don't we don't invite like that to our appreciation dinner. We, we can be the That's bigger, okay. We're, we can be the we're, bigger people. Yeah, we can definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? No, Friday just, night. It's this Five o'clock. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I know the other thing so that came in. This is a letter from Hello. Yeah. We should definitely come. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Connor fixed the garage overhead doors for the cost of twenty four sixty two. Okay, that's that's how he did. Uh, there <laughs> is trim. Installed and finished. Yeah, there's yeah, trim right. between the bays that was failing. No. Uh, and they've known about it for a couple of years and they finally got bad enough they had to deal with it. Okay. And um, what 
Toby came to me a month ago and asked uh, how we would like to pay for it. Uh, we still have money in the there's, the Yeah, there's still fund. almost 20000 left in the reserve fund. And this seemed like a perfect thing for us. Mm -hmm. okay. So that gets paid out of that money unless there is some objection. We don't have to vote on it or anything. That's just the way it is. So I think we're done if you want to get out of here. I would like to make a motion for the Eastman Players Report to adjourn. Second. Any further Aye. discussion? All of you Anybody Aye. object? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Thank I got to finish this up. Thank you for coming and thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thanks for remoting. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Calus. <laughs> it's always nice to be in Calus. Hey, we want them. We want so you to come find to our party. Our roads are. Oh, that's so a great idea. Do we bring a dinner? No, no. You can. No, no. You don't have to. But you don't have to. It's a. It's a catered. You'll really enjoy it this year. Really? Catered? Who? So catered by who? I gotta bring something. Norm. Norm. You're a state worker. You know Norm's catering. Okay. The guy at Waterbury. Oh. Oh, that's what she's doing for food. Barbecue, right? Yeah, she checked the price. Good. That's the same. She wanted me to bring food, so. You can bring extra. Okay. I'll take the Thanks, Denise. They're really good. Cookie, are you working for you? Thank you, Denise. It's okay if I sit here for a second and finish this? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Homework. Well, other stuff. Cookie? As long as I don't have to go outside. I mean, I might have to go outside. Oh, you will. I have to go outside. It's not going to take very long. We're not going to be here overnight. Don't believe me. It won't take me five minutes. Especially if you stop doing that. Okay, so we have we're gonna be going into executive session after we do one item on our continued agenda and have a couple of um, updates. Um all right. I noticed how we can keep it in stock. We need to approve and discuss an expenditure from the technology fund. When Cliff and I met with the office staff repeatedly, they've said that there's a real need for a computer for people to use when they come in to do research. Because what happens is they have to kick Judy or Barbara or yes. and Sharon can, Sharon can attest to this yeah. from personal experience off of their computer. So we would like to take money out of the technology fund to do that. There's currently $2,434 in the technology fund and $974 in the budget, computer budget fund. Do you have any idea how much a computer would cost? Could you know? Well, certainly we could, we could do something for $2,434. Uh, we can do it for less. I just <coughs> need to understand the capacity that the computer would need to, I guess it's only the records that they need to be able to search. Right. Um, In the searchable database, the mm -hmm. digitized map. Right. So right. The COT, is it the COT system? Yeah. yeah. And then it's got to integrate into, um, what do you the use? Printer. You have a, a computer that you use, a laptop, I'm assuming. You, know, you access some records from home. I know a lot of times you have to go into offices. Would you usually see a laptop or a, is it a workstation, desktop type setup? It's a, yeah, it's just a, it's just a normal computer setup that I can, and then you can, you can send it to a printer. That's, mm -hmm. well, Judy and those guys are, well, they were, they were proposing a laptop so that it could be used in various locations yeah, around the office. Around. Well. I have no idea. Realistically, I guess all we need is that, something but. that's equivalent to the computer that they are proposing for Judy. And Judy, so just so you know, Which they we're holding off on sixteen hundred dollars. We're holding off on Judy's computer until we get <laughs> some of this other stuff figured out, right? Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Night. Thank you guys. Good night, everybody. <laughs> John? 
If Judy's computer is to be replaced in FY20, after we identify the next IT provider, we may want to add an additional amount to that FY20 computer expense line of 500. It's currently 1600. So what they're saying is for $2,100, they can get Judy a new computer. So that goes to my point of $2,434 should be plenty to get a powerful enough computer. To be used. To be yeah. used. But we're replacing Judy's and Judy's is coming out to be used publicly, right? No. 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 Talking yeah, about you games. lost me on that train of thought again. Okay. So, so they want buy to a, buy a public computer and buy a new one no. for Judy. Judy's wouldn't get replaced probably until F120. So we're just buying a Which new one. Which is July 1st. Right. Which means we have to put it in the budget now. Well, right. right. And right. what they're right proposing now we're just is for the FY20 budget. Increase that line item of sixteen hundred dollars to five hundred dollars by five hundred dollars. So that's for 21. twenty one. That's to buy Judy a computer at FY twenty. But we know if we got a public access computer that it would have to have equivalent power of Judy's to run these programs that they would need to use. So based upon that logic, twenty one hundred dollars could be used to buy a computer. And you've got twenty four in there. And we have twenty four to use right now. So the question is, we need to we need to have a motion to use the money out of the fund. We can't just willy nilly do it. We have to have the board agree to do it. And then there's 24 in there. You might only use about 21. So how are we replenishing that technology line item, technology replacement fund? Is that a separate line in the computer? I mean, in the budget? That I would have to look at. Cliff, why, why not have um, a more immediate replacement of Judy and then take Judy's computer and put that out for a hand-me-down out for the occasion? We talked about that. There, I'm, I'm assuming there was a reason. Yeah, there's a reason because right now Judy's computer is working just fine. Okay. And there's a concern that if we muck around with some of that right now, she'll have problems like Sandra was having. Okay. Why don't we just vote on this and move this one through? This is not a controversial issue. No. We got we're, a lot of we're in to procedure. We're, well, it was $2,100. I know. Let's do it. I know. I don't know. So moved. What was your motion? Please repeat that, that Mr. Freeman. That we approve that $2,100 for it to set up a computer terminal for public. public access to whatever databases are necessary for them to do the review of the records. Out of the technology fund. Out of the technology fund. Was there a second? Second. Further discussion? Questions? I would suggest that uh, we might want to offer some wiggle room in there. Maybe go 22 rather than 21. That's a friendly amendment. All right. Was there any further questions, discussion? Uh, no, I just want to, I appreciate understanding why we can't just do a hand-me-down. It's only 2100 for 22 but we're, mm -hmm. you know, saving. It would be a saving, so, but there's a good reason not to, so thank yeah. you for that explanation. Yeah, and also, yeah. I think the other aspect of that is we go with a new IT provider, they're going to have some different recommendations, and mm -hmm. we may want to look at basically doing a capital plan for computers. the office computers. Right. And right yeah. now, right yeah. now, there's just, Judy's fine, working fine. Right now, there's just a need. Yeah, there is. There's a need, as, you, as you will yeah. attest to that, uh -huh. for this to happen, like, right now. It, would, it will help with the office flow immensely. And there was also peripheral discussion that if we start, when we start updating all of the computers in that office, there are other areas of the town we can... <coughs> Utilize those computers, like transferring some over the highway department, or maybe the listeners right. could use an extra right. one. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's not gonna. We're okay. we're gonna. We we'll realize that savings. Right. Somewhere regardless. else. Perfect. Good. Okay. Are you further discussion? Are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you very much, folks. All right. Um, just for the record, last meeting, and we have been talking about it, we appointed 
Barber to fill the position of auditor. Not the professional audit, but the auditor position to be in compliance with statute and charter. Then I had drafted a letter, I had Jim look at it, and he's like, no, sorry, I can't do that. That's a conflict. She cannot be assistant town clerk and an auditor. Oh, right. At the same time, because she, in essence, here, Jim, sit down at the table, will be auditing her own, own work because she takes in money. Did so, we actually appoint her? We did make a whole motion. We did. We and, we did. did. Mm -hmm. and I had, I was so glad so I we sent need that to undo to Jim. So basically, she can't do it. Right. So that's just to let you know. Okay. Now we got to go back to the, yeah, back to the drawing board. Thanks for sorry. peeing in our weedies. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's I just right. wanted to put that in the minutes so that it's reflected out accurately. Okay. Um, Sandra is homesick. And I told her we were going to have this long discussion with East Montpelier, which it lasted even longer than I thought. So I put her off to next week. <clears throat> and she's going to come in with um, some insurance updates, proposals about health insurance. We'll need to get our pencils out and start looking at the bottom line of the going line by line on the budget, looking at the 3% or 2% or whatever we decide increasing we should be ready to do that next week we're meeting on the 27th as well I don't know if Katie was here when we talked about that or not 27th in December it's a Thursday um, I don't know. John's gonna be out of the country but he's trying to work it out to see if we I'm going to be in Russia searching for a PP tape <laughs> oh okay I've got to leave real did we help Mueller All right. I can save you a trip, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's under the mattress. So, Jerome won't be able to start packing up until we make a motion to go into executive session to discuss um, legal matters. Okay. So move. Second. second. Okay. Sharon, second. All those in favor, please. At uh, eight forty-five. Aye. 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 Aye, aye, Captain. With Jim Bowler. Right.